Okay, welcome to uh, the chapter 2, okay, forces between particles. Okay, so now we enter the uh, second chapter, okay, forces between particles. Uh, these are the uh, learning objectives. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, so basically the learning objectives for this chapter is um, you need to learn how to uh, draw the uh, Lewis structure. Okay, later I will show you. Okay, for the atoms representing the elements. Then after that, you need to know what we call the octet rule to correctly predict the ions formed during the formation of ionic compounds. Uh, naming the ionic compounds and covalently the compounds and then determine the formula weights for ionic compounds and molecular weights and then part two you'll be uh, learning about the use of uh, electron uh, electron negativities to determine the type of bonding that is likely to occur between the representative elements okay later you see this word yeah this is very important the electron negativity then the last one will be determine the whether a covalent molecule is polar or non-polar. Okay, so all this you will be learning uh, in the following chapters here. Yeah? Okay, chapter two. Okay, so for chapter two, I have uh, divided into two parts. Okay, so for part one, uh, you will be learning. Uh, these three things, the outer shell electron, what does it mean by outer shell? You have learned what is electron, but what does it mean by outer shell electrons? Then after that, you'll be learning what we call intramolecular forces. Very important, this word, intramolecular forces. I will tell you later on why is that. It's, which is a uh, bonding between atoms. Uh, and then we will learn how to do some mass calculations. Uh, we have done, uh, for previous chapter, we have done the mass calculation for atoms, okay, for a particular element. But now you're going to have a uh, slightly more complicated uh, mass calculation which involve a group of the uh, elements that join together, either ionic or covalently uh, bonded molecules here. Yeah? Okay, let's uh, look at the first part. What is outer shell electrons? Okay, so we have uh, learned before in the, the previous uh, chapter, chapter one. What is electron? Electron basically we have the core, okay, which is made of the proton and neutron. The electrons are surrounding outside. Then we have learned basically the um, uh, the electrons arranged in shell. Okay, shell 1, shell 2, shell 3, and so forth. Okay, then the electrons are arranged in this way. Okay, further and further away from the core. Okay, so uh, we will be uh, referring particles. Okay, some of the terminology particles will be referring to the atoms, ions, or molecules throughout the lecture. Okay, this is uh, what we have learned in previous chapter. Chapter 1, we learned about the box diagram. Okay, we got shell 1, shell 2, and shell 3. And then we have learned about uh, the, the protons, the number of protons. Okay, determine what kind of element it is. And then we have learned about what we call the electric, electron, uh, electrically neutral uh, the atoms, which means that they have the equal number of number of proton and number of electrons, which means, for example, if they have one proton, then they have one electron, and so forth. Okay. So we also learn about how we fill out yeah each of these uh, orbitals. Okay, shell one, shell two, shell three. Then for shell one, there's only one subshell, one s. Shell two, we got. 2s and 2p subshell. Uh, for the 3, we got 3s, 3p, and 3d. Okay, do remember that in order to fill out these, we fill out 3s, 3p, 4s, then only 3d. Okay. 
Okay, so what are outer shell electrons? Basically, when we fill out, okay, when we fill out the uh the the what we call the box diagram, okay, we fill out for example if you got like ten, okay, ten electron, then fill out from uh the shell number one, then after that we shall fill out shell number two, okay. If we stop at shell number two, okay. Then the shell number two, whatever electron is shell number two is what we call the outer shell electrons. Okay. So they got a few names. Okay. Either you can call it as the outermost shell electrons or what we can call it as the valence shell electrons. These two basically it means the same thing. Okay. It means the same thing. So you can either call it as the outermost shell electron or what we call valence shell electrons. So this is what I uh, have mentioned just now. If you have filled out your box diagram and you stop at shell number one, okay, this one will be the outer shell electrons. If you fill out shell one, okay, shell two, and it stops here, just say two p, and then the two uh, shell number two, okay, is the outer shell electrons, okay, and so forth. Okay, basically just tell you okay where which one is the outer shell electrons here. So uh here is uh a number of the examples. Okay, we have seen this diagram in chapter one. Okay, you can see all these elements. Okay, these elements when you fill up, okay, so basically these are the number of protons, the atomic numbers. So for for number Li the uh, number of protons is 3, so if it's electrically neutral atoms, they got 3 electrons, so they fill up the orbitals, okay, in uh, 1s, and then the, the third electrons fill up at 2, okay, so the outer shell electron will be this, 1 electron, okay, 1 electron in shell 2. For example, if it got carbon, carbon got 6 uh, protons, means it got 6 electrons, so we are fill up two at uh 1s okay shell number one and then the remaining fill up until 2p so 2p over here this five uh four okay one two three four these four will be the outermost shell electron for carbon okay these four electrons here will be the outermost shell electron for carbon for example, Na, okay, which is sodium, uh, it got ele 11 uh, protons, so it got 11 electrons. So we fill up 2, and then 8 over here, so 10. So the number 11 is in shell uh, 3, okay, in 3s in particular. So this one electron will be the, the outermost shell electron for sodium, Na. Okay, so we are talking about the electrons at the most outermost shell. Okay, so I hope that clarifies. Okay, why is it so important for you to know about the outer shell electrons? Basically, these are the electrons that we help to join, okay, between atoms. Okay, so we can know that uh, most of the uh, uh, compounds or ionic compounds, okay, or molecules, covalent joint molecules, they are all in a few, okay, a few of the electrons uh, joined together, okay, uh, a few of the uh, atoms joined together. For example, the most familiar H2O, okay, what is it? It's water, okay, so it's combined of two hydrogen and one oxygen. So how these combine together? They actually combine through the outermost shell electrons. Okay, how they react? I will tell you later on. Yeah. Okay. Um, and these uh, outermost shell electrons are also what we call the reacting electrons. So we got a few names that joined to, uh, that we have mentioned: outermost shell electrons. Then we talk. Uh, we mentioned about the reacting reactants that we talk about valence electrons okay they more or less they carry similar meanings yeah 
Okay, before I go to see how they join together through outer shell electrons, let me introduce you what we call the Lewis dot structure. Okay, this is the simplified way of representing the Lewis dot structure. Okay, here is the element you put here. So the dot 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 here is where uh, we call the outer shell electrons. Yeah, is usually at eight. Okay, is eight eight outer shell electrons. So for example, um, okay, let's look at here. Okay, so over here, uh, which is the periodic table of elements. Okay, so what we can see from here, the outer shell electron for hydrogen is uh, one. Okay, so it's one. So what we do is we will put the H. Okay, just one dot over here. Okay. If we talk about like for example uh, carbon, carbon got four outer shell electrons, so we would represent like that again it will be uh, separated. Yeah, one, two, three, four. Okay. For oxygen, okay, the outer shell electron is one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so it will be oxygen one. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So if uh, so you guys should know what I'm talking about. Okay. So all these the outer shell electron as I mentioned. Okay. Let me go back few slides. Okay. Back to here. So you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. Carbon. Uh, got four outer shell electrons. Okay. One, two, three, four. Okay. So that's why I. Representing for carbon one, two, three, four. Oxygen, yes, oxygen, or oh, not here. Uh, okay, there's no oxygen over here. Okay, it doesn't matter. Okay, oxygen will have uh, uh, six. Okay, we should draw in this way. Okay, how can I know it so fast that it got? The outermost shell electron is a simpler way by looking at the uh, the periodic table elements. Okay, so what we have here is group one, group two, group three, group four, group five, group six, group seven, and group eight. Okay, so in a way, which is the whole group over here. They have the outermost shell electron is one electron. So over here you should only uh, for example lithium, so it will be Li just one. Okay. Group two, the outermost shell electron will be two. Okay, so how you represent is Be one two. Okay. For here carbon you can go is four oxygen. Okay, even for S S will be six. So one. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay, for helium over here will be eight. Yeah, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so this is how you represent using the Lewis dot structure. Okay, remember, yeah, is Lewis dot structure. Okay, so how do you do this? Okay, you can try it yourself. Okay, the answer is here. Okay, as how I've uh, uh, mentioned just now, yeah. Okay, the next one will be what we call intramolecular forces. Okay, intramolecular forces is the force between atoms, which means that atom, atom, they join together. Okay, they form what we call ionic compound. Okay, or molecule, but when this more uh when this molecule or ionic compound interact with another compound, okay, so for example over here is uh over here okay over here is uh, water, okay, so water is made of H two O, okay, so the the interaction between the hydrogen and the oxygen, okay, two hydrogen and oxygen. Would be the intramolecular force. Okay, so over here, for example, H two O. Okay, 
okay, H2O, okay, how they interact with each other, okay, which is uh, representing with this surface uh, ball, okay, is what we call intramolecular forces, okay, between atoms. But when you're talking about two water molecules, when they are interacting with each other, this is what we call intermolecular forces, okay, which is this water molecule interact with this. This is interacting is called intermolecular forces. But when the hydrogen and the oxygen interact with each other, we call it as intramolecular forces, okay. Um, it's very important for you to distinguish these two, okay, is the, the reason is because uh, the intramolecular force is very difficult for you to disrupt. Okay, when you are when, when you during your cooking, especially okay, when you are preparing your uh when you are doing cooking okay or baking or whatever, uh usually uh the intramolecular forces is difficult to uh be disrupted. Okay, the heat usually can disrupt the intermolecular forces. Okay, during your cooking. Yeah, that's why it's very important for you to distinguish these two, yeah? Okay, let's look at this. Intramolecular forces, which is the chemical bonding between atoms, okay? And uh, basically how they form together, okay, is through outer shell electron, as what I've mentioned. Okay, it's through the outer shell electron. Later, we'll use the water molecule as the uh, examples. Okay. Whenever they bond together, they actually form what we call the octet rule. Octet rule is sort of like they fill up the outer shell electron to make it eight electron. Okay, that's why it's called octet. Octet means eight. Okay, means eight. So octet rule states that each atom in a molecule share electron until it is surrounded by eight valence electron. Okay. Okay, very simple example is that, for example, uh, the uh, hydrogen, we got uh, one outer shell electrons, okay? So, you can see that uh, water, okay, hydrogen, okay, for water, yeah, H2O, hydrogen only got one valence electron, oxygen, it got one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, what we have mentioned just now. So all these they need to combine to make it eight. When they sharing, they need to have eight. So how? So that's why they have two of these combined with one oxygen. In that case, got two electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So it fulfill the octet rule. Okay. Another word is that the atoms. They will join together to make sure that they have eight electrons all together. Okay, for the outer shell. For the outer shell, they will have eight electrons, then it will be stable. Okay, that's why one of the examples I gave you. Okay, whenever they got outer shell electron eight, they will be stable, just like our noble gas. Noble gas is basically the like for example helium. Okay, you can see from here, go back here. So helium, if you see in this group, their outer shell is always 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, like helium. Okay, 8 shell. That's why helium, right, is very, very stable. It can exist by its own. Okay, very non-reactive. Okay, same go to all this, yeah. So they, you, can, you can see that they are quite uh, stable. The outer rule is uh, most useful for compounds of the second period uh, elements. Okay, um, this this means that you are skipping the top two. Okay, so what it means, right? You are skipping these two, yeah. Okay, this hydrogen and helium. So it applies from the period two onwards. Okay, so over here, here, here. Yeah, okay, the reason is that here the maximum is only two electrons, so they cannot fulfill the octet rule. All right, so this one means that yeah. So you can see from here, okay, the octet rule, we got uh, 
one from over here is from uh, hydrogen okay then the uh, oxygen we got one two three four okay combined with the uh, hydrogen is seven and eight okay so eight outer shell are fulfilled already okay ammonia we got uh, one two three four five six seven eight as well okay one from each hydrogen and then over here one two three four five hydrogen okay you can see from here as well okay the next is that i will uh, explain there are two type of uh, bonding here okay so what you have learned so far is that you know what how to differentiate the uh, how to identify the outer motion electrons and then you have uh, uh, learned about uh, why is it so important for the outer shell electron because it helps to combine them together okay it helps to bond between two different atoms uh, which fulfill okay which follows the octet rule okay octet rule means that when they combine their outer shell electron will be eight okay all right there are two types of bonding okay there's one the type a is i call ionic bonding ionic bonding is when they donate okay so one atoms will donate the electron to another atoms okay for covalent bonds this one is not donate this one will share okay they will share the electron this one is donate this one is share later you will see you will, there are two types of sharing one is called the equal sharing one is called the non-equal sharing okay non-equal sharing all right this one is the shared electrons this one is where the, the electron is being donated from one element to another element okay okay let's look at the first one ionic bonding ionic bonding uh, the octet rule is satisfied by transferring one electrons or two electrons from one atom to another yeah and the reason why it can transfer is because one of the elements they have very strong it have a strong uh stronger uh the affinity for electrons okay uh or in other words is uh, what we call the electronegativity okay electronegativity is the measurement of the tendency for one atoms to attract okay to attract the electrons to their atoms when this is very, very strong you can take away the electrons and contribute to its own uh, outer for, outer shell most electron to uh, fulfill the octet rule okay in uh, in at the same time the other elements they will also fulfill the eight electrons okay all right so they will fill out the outer small shell electron this is what we call the the uh, ionic yeah the share uh, the, the donating okay so the real method is what we call the ionic compound okay so one will gain one will lose when you when you gain okay when you gain electron what does it mean gain electrons you actually have more negative charge when you lose you become positive charge okay for example how, how i know uh, how i tell about this right is that for example uh when the uh, when the when the uh, for example if we got the uh, hydrogens okay if it's uh hydrogens if hydrogen they got uh, one electrons okay we know that the outer motion of is only one electrons if we loses this okay donate away what happened is that this will be a positive charge okay because the reason is that the the uh, for the hydrogen if you're looking at this they got one photon and one electron so one positive one negative okay so it will be electric neutral the net charge is zero but when you donate away the electron what happen okay the electron no more okay so you become 
one positive the proton will contribute to positive that's why it's plus one okay or plus okay okay what kind of elements here you can uh, make it very very simple for you as well usually for those who form ionic bonding is between metal and non-metal okay the metal will lose the electrons which means that it will donate out okay lose electron means it will donate out and then the electron will be received by non-metals okay so metal is uh, this area okay metal is here non-metal is here so these metals will donate electron to the uh, non-metal non-metal will receive it then they will fulfill the outermost shell electron okay okay examples is here yeah we call potassium potassium has one outer shell electrons you can you can double check here yeah okay uh, when you learn more okay when you self revision you can check you got one outer shell electrons okay how you how you know also as i told you group one group two group three group four group five group six group seven group eight one always called outer shell electron is one here is the potassium okay chlorine is here got seven outer shell electrons okay so so you can see potassium one outer shell electrons potassium uh, chlorine is seven one two three four five six seven okay so shell electrons what happened is that the electron from here the potassium will be donated to chlorine okay once donated the potassium become plus this one after receiving become negative because over here chlorine has seven proton okay seven plus okay when you have eight electron eight negative what happens if you balance out there it will be net negative one okay so when you balance it it will be net negative one that's why it has a negative charge here there's a positive charge because there's a proton here okay one proton it will be plus so this is how you uh, uh how you how you write so it's k c l okay same go to sodium chloride okay this is how the sodium chloride interact the one you are using for your salt okay in your kitchen for seasoning as well so the potassium okay how they hold together is through the charges okay how they hold through is through the charges okay okay the reason why metal and non-metal is because there's a large difference in their electronegativity okay as I mentioned, electronegativity is the measurement of the force and the attraction of electrons, which means that the uh, the metal usually have a weaker, okay, they have a weaker attraction to electrons, whereas the non-metal have a stronger uh, attraction to the electrons. So the uh, electron will be transferred from the metal to the non-metal, okay. There's a table for it, okay. All this table or the data will be given to you. What you need to know that these are the value for electron negativity. The larger the, the, the number means they got stronger electron negativity. Okay, as I mentioned, stronger electron negativity means that it has a higher tendency to attract the electrons. So you can see the metals over here their electronegativity is quite weak okay we, we are indicated by the low number whereas here the non-metal you can see their electronegativity value is very high which means that they have a tendency higher tendency to attract the electrons all right okay okay so the difference so it's very important yeah once you got the value of the electron activity then you find a difference there's a simple rule uh if the difference is more than 1.9 okay usually it will be 
the ionic bonding. Right? In this case, the example I gave you, potassium is 0 0.8, okay? The so chlor chlorine is uh, 3, so 3, 0 0.8, the difference is 2.1. 2 and 1.9, so is ionic bond. Okay. Ionic bond is very, very strong. Okay. Uh, once once they form the uh, the the ionic bonding is very, very strong. You want to separate them, like for example the sodium and chlorine. You want to separate them. It's very, very difficult. Okay. Uh, that is uh, why the uh, store, if you try to burn it, it's very difficult for them to melt as well. It still remains as solid. Okay. Okay. To name it, uh, very very simple. Uh, what you do is that you have a metal. Okay. For example, sodium. The non-metal, you will use this stand. Okay, and add ID to it. Yeah. So for for sodium uh an NCL for NCL so the metal name is sodium okay and the stem from the chlorine it will be chlor okay then you add IDE in there so it's sodium chlor right okay so this is how you do the naming okay sodium chloride or the same chloride. Okay, next is the covalent bond. Covalent bond is where it sharing, okay, sharing of one to another. As I mentioned, if you donate from the metal to the non-metal, in this case, covalent bonding is sharing. Usually, sharing, okay. Remember this, yeah. Non-metal share electrons. Okay, in covalent uh, bonds, the the are by sharing a pair of electrons. Okay, usually no metals. Okay, no metals elements form covalent bonds. Uh, in resulting metal, we call it molecule. Just now is what we call ionic compound. Okay, it is, it is ionic uh, bonding. We call it ionic compound. In here, covalent bond as a molecule. So based on the difference in electron activity, there are two types of uh, covalent bonding. There will be equal sharing and not unequal sharing here. Yeah. Equal sharing is when you find a difference in electron negativity for at less. Okay, which means that another word is that their tendency to attract electrons not much difference. Okay, when they are not much difference, they share equally the electrons. Okay, but when there is uh the the differences in the electron is 0 0.5 to 1.8 okay not large enough to donate then they have what we call the unequal sharing or what we call polar covalent bond for equal sharing is what we call non-polar covalent bond the equal unequal sharing is called polar covalent bond okay so all these uh electrons over here Okay, you can see they are uh, sharing together. I will give you an example over here. Okay, examples uh, over here is uh, water. Okay, water you can see they got six, one, two, three, four, five, six electrons. Okay, and then you find a difference between the uh, electron negativity is only 1.4. Okay, 1.4 is what? Okay, if I go back here, 1.4 is here. So it will be unequal sharing of the electrons, yeah, unequal sharing of the electrons. And the bond we call as a polar covalent bonds, yeah. So when they share, okay, so you can see from here, so they will be sharing, okay. And the electron they are sharing, right, is unequal. In this case, right, uh, the electrons will pull pull towards where the electrons will be pulled towards one side okay electrons will pull towards the oxygen because oxygen has higher electron negativity okay 3.5 uh, another word how we can represent this right is the um, the oxygen okay hydrogen hydrogen 
okay so the uh, electronegativity is tendency so we have uh, the electrons will pull the side so here will be a uh, delta negative okay slightly negative here is delta positive delta positive okay okay we use this delta to resent slightly okay because it's unequal sharing it share more towards the oxygen so oxygen has slightly more negative the uh, hydrogen is slightly positive okay for methane methane the difference is 0 0.4 so it's a non-polar column bonds so there's no delta positive no delta negative yeah so same goes to nitrogen and carbon dioxide so over here okay column bond is also very very strong okay like diamond um, is uh it's very difficult for you to separate them yeah the only way for you to separate them is to break it okay which require very high energy to break it okay how you name it very simple okay more complex statement i will tell you in uh, uh chapter three yeah chapter three so if you give the name of the mass electronegative element first okay then i will give the stem okay exactly same like the uh the ionic compounds you add IDE and so forth okay so for example in this way we got the carbon okay we got two oxygen so it's di okay ox is the uh, stem for the oxygen and then you add the E that's why it's called carbon dioxide here is called carbon monoxide and here this one is basically water yeah dihydrogen monoxide okay so we come to the third part okay mass calculation okay any compound and molecule okay the third part mass calculation is exactly same as how you calculate for the uh, the atomic mass okay just that you need to add up all together in this case here yeah? uh, both for ionic compound and molecule all right mass calculations so instead of uh, just one atoms now you need to combine okay you need to combine the the mass together okay this is what we recap for the previous chapters how you find the mass is through here 12.011 okay in this case uh, the atom here is 12.011 so uh in uh, for atomic weight we call it, if it's for atoms the weight we call it as an atomic weight as it actually all the same here yeah? okay just that we use it to distinguish different forms of the compounds here yeah? if it's ionic compound we call it as a formula weight okay just a different naming it is exactly the same thing okay then molecule we call it as a molecule weight okay so when I call more uh, formula weights, again, when I ask you to calculate the mass of the ionic compound, we say, uh, please find the formula weight of sodium chloride. Okay, I wouldn't call it as a molecular weight of sodium chloride. Okay, so it's different thing. For molecule, I say that, uh, please find the molecular weight of water. Okay, because water is a molecule. Okay, they are exactly the same meaning. The only thing is that the name represents the type of compound or the name uh, tell you the type of molecule. Like for example, if I ask you to find the mass of the atom, I say that uh, please find the, give me the atomic weight of hydrogen, for example. Okay, so it's just naming. Okay, so how do you calculate? Basically, you just add up. Okay, you just add up. That's it. Okay, if you're looking at the uh, periodic table element, the sodium is 22.99 U. Okay, chlorine is 35.453 U. Okay, so you just add up. This will be the formula weight for sodium chloride. Okay, so this is the weight for one sodium chloride ionic compound. NaCl so the weight for this okay so for molecular weight same thing but you just need to take note that how many are there 
in this case is made up of two hydrogen hydrogen is 1.008 u so into time this is the uh, uh, the uh, atomic weight of the oxygen so here plus here is 18.16 u so this is the weight okay or on water molecule okay same thing here uh, the unit you can convert directly okay exactly same as the atomic uh, mass okay uh, you can uh, you can directly convert okay into molar mass okay so from you direct convert to grams per mole Okay, this grams per mole is very simple. This is the number of the uh, the the molecule we can call it. Okay, this is the mass of it. Yeah. So grams per mole we can actually measure. That's why we we call laboratory skills here, yeah? because grams can be measured. So I can uh, see over here directly. You can convert the uh, atomic skill. Okay, the uh, for the uh, formula weight of sodium chloride directly to the molar mass 58.43 grams per mole this you can use it for calculation a lot of calculations okay then same here directly you convert the molecular weight of water into molar mass okay try this one Use atomic weight from the periodic table elements. Cal uh, calculate okay the molecular weight of urea. Okay, when you see molecular weight, you know that this is combined. The atoms over here combined through uh, the covalent bond. Okay. Okay. The, okay. So how do you calculate? So what you have is you got find out the atomic uh, weight of the carbon. Hydrogen, nitrogen. Make sure you multiply the weight by four for hydrogen, two for nitrogen. Okay, so this is how you do it. Uh, one, uh, one carbon. Okay, two nitrogen, four hydrogen, and one oxygen. When you add up all together, it's sixty point zero six two u. Okay, this one is uh, slightly more complicated. How many moles of each type of atoms are contained in one mole of chloroform? So this is chloroform, yeah? So when you say one mole, CHL3, okay, it tells you how many in one of these got how many mole each of atoms. You are made up of one mole of carbon, one mole of hydrogen and three mole of chlorine okay one mole of hydrocarbon one mole of hydrogen and three moles of uh, chlorine okay so whenever you got one mole of this you got if you break it down into individual you got one mole of carbon one mole of hydrogen and three moles of chlorine yeah, to made up to one mole of chloroform CHCl3. Okay. Okay, that's it. You got a lot of uh, practice questions for tutorial. Okay, please make sure you do it. Okay, uh, please attempt it. Then after that, I will uh, show you the demo. Uh, demo. Uh, the uh, questions. Questions. Okay, demo tutorial for the questions. Okay. If got uh, again, please make sure you type your questions in your Padlet. If got no questions, please indicate no question in the Padlet. Okay. Please make sure you have your name and your ID when you post it in Chapter Two. Okay, Chapter Two. Make sure you don't post in the wrong place. So place it in Chapter Two. Okay. That is how I mark your attendance. All right. Thank you so much. That's it for Part One.